move on to Archie Brown Sports Center. Uh, capital request from the Sports Center. Um, staff are recommending replacement of the arena heaters. Um, for those of you that have been at Archie Browning, uh, they need replacement. Will they be coin operated? Is the question. Yes. Uh, at this moment, staff are not recommending coin operated. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> We're trying to get money back. <laughs> if we buy energy efficient heaters, I think we'll be okay. Um, front door replacement at Archie Browning. Uh, as council recalls, which I believe it was the previous council, uh, we had a short um, uh, $30,000 shortfall. It was $56,000 assigned in last year's budget uh, for replacement of the front doors. Uh, if council recalls, we needed to borrow approximately 30000 of that to deal with a shortfall we had on the Archie Browning $2 million upgrade project, and that was because a dehumidification unit uh, needed to be replumbed from spec. So what we did is we took the remainder of that, put it in a prior year, and saved it and bumped that up. Uh, so we have kind of the, uh, the roughly $50,000 um, for uh, replacement of the front doors. That was an area that we had to cut out of the expansion project as it was. As you know, remember those were the original doors from the 60s. We'd like them to match what we've got at the back end of the building which are full automatic accessibility uh, doors. Uh, install key fobs, I've already spoken about that. That is uh, for us to control primarily the access into the corridors for the curling rink, which allows us to shut those down without having staff manually key them. That is also gonna help keep some of the traffic out of there that should not be in when the curling uh, club and users are not in that facility. And this allows us to computer control those. Uh, reconditioning of the building sound system. Um, this is the in-house uh, intercom system. Right now, uh, that system is not functioning. But what we did last year is we did the arena sound system for events. Uh, this is the in-house, uh, in the ceiling uh, intercom system uh, for uh, complete replacement of that. Uh, the electronic scoreboard in the arena needs to be replaced, and the cost to do that is uh, approximately $25,000. Um, the Zamboni is a request from the m and &E fund for $200,000. This is a project, uh, the Zamboni is, uh, was purchased in the very early 90s. Uh, it was scheduled for replacement about three years ago. We've kept maintaining that as it goes, and that was to uh, adjust for other expenditures the corporation had. However, the Zamboni needs to be replaced, uh, and so that cost is $200,000. Uh, that is for um, a budget value for an electric Zamboni. The cost for Payne Zamboni is about $60,000 less than this. Uh, what we will be doing is bringing back a report to council for approval on the purchase of that because it's in excess of $100,000. At that time, council can direct staff if they prefer to go propane or electric and we can have that conversation at that time. Uh, the flat deck uh, for the sports center is also used with the rec center. This is a 1970s vehicle with a uh, hydraulic lift that is no longer functioning. This is used to move tables, chairs, and stages. As I said, it's a 1970s uh, pickup truck. Uh, <coughs> uh, needs to be replaced. Uh, installing HVAC units and exhaust fans. What this is, uh, is um, installing variable speed motors on our handling units. We've had great success uh, that we've noticed since the upgrade with variable speed motors on our plant. Uh, this would allow us to convert all of our handling units to variable speed as well for energy efficiency. And uh, for those of you that have been to the crow's nest, uh, the carpet up there uh, is uh, almost original and subsequently needs to be replaced. We were able to get the curling lounges uh, done uh, as part of uh, last year's operating budget. The crow's nest, of course, is a substantially larger space and therefore there's a $700 cap request for that. And that uh, totals up to the sports center cap. Um, thank you, Chair, Sue, you too, Mr. Hartman. So I'm looking at the uh, electronic scoreboard. Um, so this is the installation of the scoreboard. You already have it, or we're just purchasing one? Or what this is a replacement of uh, the one that no longer functions. Uh, so has the scoreboard been purchased, or are you already... Already, and you're just wanting this is a to put it in. Your Worship, through the Council Roundabout, this is a replacement unit for the current scoreboard that is not functioning. Thank you. 
Um, I know that uh, Parks and Rec has been quite diligent in looking for partnerships and other monies, grant monies and so on. I wondered whether there was any possibility for an electronic scoreboard to be donated or funded by a team or a company. Um, do you think that, has that already been considered and, or you put it out there and, and it didn't fly? Uh, Your Worship, through to Councillor Hunnaby, we are working on those now uh, and have been for quite some time. Uh, however, uh, it requires a few people to play. We are pursuing a few avenues, uh, but to be safe, uh, I need to budget for worst case, and worst case is I need to go up and purchase this alone. But we are pursuing partnerships, and if that comes, then that number substantially reduces. Thank you. Glad to hear it. Councillor Morrison. Just on that, that question of the uh, sponsorship of, um, is it becoming increasingly common amongst other uh, public rec centers and facilities, uh, arenas to have, I don't know, something like the country grocer uh, scoreboard or the uh, you know, um, C-SPAN scoreboard or something like that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we probably got them on a lot of shopping lists already for various things, but is that is that becoming more and more common, uh, and is it <coughs> sort of a best practice, I guess you could say? Uh, Your Worship, through to Councillor Morrison, we're trying everything we can to reduce the, the cost of operating it. Uh, partnerships come in many shapes and sizes. Um, that's something that is uh, becoming increasingly common. The challenge there is we're always looking for money and uh, companies are always looking to, to provide assets. The challenge with something like a scoreboard is unless you're in the scoreboard business, uh, it's not really viewed as an in-kind donation, it's viewed as a capital requisition. And so we're still on that same issue. It's not like uh, <coughs> trying to uh, partner on a use of a vehicle as an example. Um, so the, the challenge with something that's so niche is a scoreboard. The opportunity for us is to generate revenue off the potential signage that accompanies that. And we do have a relationship with our Junior B Hockey franchise, and those are areas that we are pursuing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Morrison. Okay, moving on to Councillor uh, Parks. Yeah, uh, 5000 dollars uh, every year comes out of the M&E fund to replace uh, small equipment. These are everything from uh, our small lawnmowers, fish lawnmowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, those type of things. Uh, mower transporter, uh, there's two trailers. Uh, that are carried forward from last year, uh, one of which we're waiting because we need to purchase the following item, uh, Unit 174 is one of our large flail deck mowers. Uh, this is scheduled for replacement uh, for $36,000 out of M&E, and this is depreciated as we normally go through. Uh, unit 164 is one of our um, uh, flat deck trucks with a lift on it. Uh, that unit is uh, at the end of its lifespan as well, and we're looking at uh, replacement of that. We've held off uh, trying to time uh, with Green Fleet policy, and that's why it's been a uh, prior carry forward. Uh, the seniors' fitness equipment, uh, we've got grants uh, uh, from the federal government. We received a private donation grant as well, and uh, we've just received another $20,000 from the provincial government uh, to help fund that project, part of that the programming as well as the lighting side of that. And that is equipment, as you can see, is going in across the street uh, this week. I'll stop there. Is there any questions? Questions, Okay, moving along. Uh, install safety lights in vehicles, uh, three vehicles in particular. Um, what this is, is those are those um, wig wag arrow boards that you see on most of our vehicles. Parks traditionally uh, hadn't had the need for that until we put more traffic islands in. And now when we do maintenance work, it's WCB requirements to us to light up, quite frankly, our parks vehicles like Christmas trees to ensure the safety of our staff and uh, the patrons when they're near those areas. So uh, that is to light up three more vehicles that allow us to uh, do road maintenance on the islands, uh, primarily along the Squamal Road and Uh The backhoe attachment for the Kubota, uh, we have a large Kubota tractor that has uh, multifunction use to it. Uh, we're asking $8,500 for a backhoe attachment. What this will allow us to do is speed up the process of boulevard tree removals to minimize the amount of time we're in front of residents' houses. Uh, right now, we uh, try and coordinate as best of our ability with public works, but there's increasing demand for their larger equipment, and most of our boulevard trees are able to do with our own equipment. This would allow us to be in and out within a day. So remove the tree, uh, remove the stump, plant the tree, fill it in, and be gone by the time the resident got home 
and that is why we're asking for that replacement or that uh, inclusion. The garbage can upgrade for 45,000. This has been on the books for about two years now. Uh, the reason it's delayed is we're waiting on a garbage truck. So as soon as a garbage truck gets done, it's time to make sure that all of our parks areas are upgraded at that time. This is worker safety issues, uh, so that we're not we're minimizing the amount of time uh, and opportunity that our staff have to uh, handle the bags of garbage coming out of our public cans numerous times. And so once we know what the design of the garbage truck is, we can then select the garbage cans appropriately. So we're timing this with the replacement of the, of the garbage vehicle. Uh, our signage, pathway, irrigation, and parks equipment are um, uh, annual uh, operating costs. These are ongoing operating uh, expenses that are funded into capital. We've also had some carry forward of 10,000 uh, prior year for signage, uh, 3,800 for pathways, irrigation, and parks equipment. The $10,000 for the parks equipment and the path and the signage is using uh, is being used to help fund the fitness park. The new $10,000 is allocated for uh, existing playground equipment that is in the rotation. Um, the uh, one particular piece in question for the parks is uh, the um, area on beauty uh, is scheduled for replacement as uh, Councillor Brame is aware. Uh, that park has been, uh, uh, the equipment there has been removed. It was scheduled for replacement and we're proposing to do that this year with the ongoing operating uh, picnic tables, we, uh, we budget $5,000 in donations a year, so that's a revenue source. Uh, community gardens, uh, the previous council had awarded $10,000 for an additional community garden. Uh, this is a prior year carry forward. Staff have met with the Community Garden Society and their focus right now is to expand the current operation at Anderson, grow that uh, this year, and potentially look at existing sites or additional sites following. So this uh, may be a carry forward, it may be used for Anderson Park expansion as well. I'll stop there if there's any questions. None moving forward. Um, as council's aware, we purchased the property uh, beside Lampson Park, uh, could have been a year ago last September. Um, we were able to uh, move forward on removal of the house under the EVP project, so the house came down in August. The land was flattened and uh, we installed cedar hedging to ensure the privacy of the two neighbors along Coolville. Uh, what we're doing now is we'd like to get the design together. The previous council had uh, uh, awarded uh, a five-year MFA debt plan of $95,000, just under a $500,000 construction budget. The purpose here was to um, replace, well not replace, but uh, build multi-sport courts on Lampson Park, as well as enhance the playground that is there to create more of a neighborhood destination around Lampson Park. Traditionally, it's been used just by Scrumble Baseball. Um, the, uh, the feeling with the neighborhood in that area was that we wanted a more inclusive park. This would allow us to put in a multi-sport court, uh, allow more traffic and more neighborhood involvement in the, uh, in the uh, facility, as well as improve the playground equipment and some minor upgrades to the ball field and the subsequent uh, concession buildings as well. So uh, staff are planning uh, to move forward with that project later this fall. Japanese Garden Phase 4, we had 26,594 carry for. That's because we were uh, in, in the process of construction. We're nearing uh, completion of Phase 4. Um, however, we are requesting an additional $25,000. Uh, we have uh, noticed that there's um, a small cost overrun, as well as what we'd like to do is do some minor upgrades to the past three phases of about $10,000. That's gonna allow us to do one big grand opening and do everything including the name clocking and everything else. Um, so if you haven't been up there, I'd encourage you to take a look. Uh, we we're just cleaning up the site today. Uh, it's uh, quite stunning. The uh, uh, house at Saks Point Park, uh, the previous council had awarded $20,000 to do a feasibility study. That process was delayed uh, by our department uh, just with uh, lack of resources. So staff are uh, proposing a carry forward of $20,000 and a supplemental request of $25,000. There'll be uh, ongoing dialogue with both the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee and with this council. Uh, the $25,000 is uh, for demolition and removal and drawings if council, council sees fit uh, to proceed with um, a new opportunity at Saks Point. But uh, those conversations will happen as uh, further staff reports come back and forth to council but we wanted to budget accordingly uh, 
uh, should there be opportunity. Uh, Macaulay Point Park Snake Rail Fencing. This is 57,100 carry forward. We're still in uh, discussions with D&D and uh, approving budget commitment from council. We'll re-engage D&D in those conversations and be able to move forward with some of the concerns with our species at risk and our contractual obligations on the D&D leased land. Oops, I skipped one. Mm -hmm. uh, Sioux Place Bridge. Um, Councils will call, we have a wooden structure on the, uh, the end of Sioux Place leading in Gorge Park. Um, that bridge uh, is scheduled for replacement. We've uh, done some uh, engineering auditing on it. Uh, we have two options. Uh, one is to recondition the bridge to the tune of uh, about $100,000. Uh, that would gain us about 15 to 20 years life on it. Um, the challenge with that uh, is the current pitch and elevation as well as the current structure uh, does not meet uh, the building code standard nor does it meet our accessibility guidelines because of the actual elevation is too high. So we are uh, suggesting that we uh, build a prefab structure which would give us more than 50 years for a total of about just under $300,000. And so that is why um, the prior year carry forward is there. We've just completed that engineering audit and we'll be providing council with more information as we go, should you see fit to do a complete steel replacement, which is what staff's recommend. Uh, the lighting at uh, uh, Macaulay Point and Gorge is, is uh, needing replacement, so there's 84,000 in prior year carry for it to do that. Uh, we want to time all the work at Gorge accordingly, so we have uh, as little impact on the operation as we can, uh, and minimizing uh, those potential. So with that, we'd like to move forward with that. And uh, the kayak launch at Sioux Place, this is timing with the bridge, because it's all part of the same project, so there's a 25,000 carry for it from last year, simply because we want to do the uh, get our plans together with the bridge and do the kayak launch in and around the same time because we're in the same work area and we're going to require the same permits from the Ministry of Environment to Department of Fisheries and Oceans. So those are the uh, 2012 budget requests for parks. Thank you. Questions? Um, thank you, Chair. So you to Mr. Hartman. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the Sioux Place Esquimalt Gorge Park bridge replacement and then a five-year MFA debt replay, uh, repayment. Um, so please, if you could, um, refresh my memory um, regarding the fact if previous council, and I thought we did, maybe we didn't, um, uh, what did we exactly approve then around that? We didn't actually approve the bridge, a new bridge, correct? Uh, no, that is correct. Uh, Your Worship, through to Councilor Arnaby, you, uh, the previous council approved replacement of the Sioux Place Bridge uh, to the tune of just under, or just over $300,000 uh, funding five years through MFA, and that was for a complete bridge replacement pending public process. Uh, what we wanted to do was ensure that there was no physical way for us to um, be able to use the current bridge and modify it to meet current code and, and council's accessibility standards. That work was done uh, late 2011, early 2012, we've confirmed that uh, that's not capable, it's not possible to do, and therefore uh, we're suggesting that we carry forward with the work that the previous council had directed us to do. Thank you. And then I expect then, will it be this year then that you will bring forward something um, of a more permanent, for a more permanent structure? That is our intention, yes. Thank you. Councilor Schindemann. Thank you, Your Worship. When we did the uh, orientation tour, we went around everything uh, to the parks. Uh, one of the things I noticed, of course, was the uh, washrooms. And I was just wondering, we had sort of talked about that. Uh, is there anything either in the general operating budget or, and I didn't see anything here, because I'm I thinking specifically about that porta potty at, at the park. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Uh, the, the pride of the squine out there. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything in this year's budget to address that issue of, of providing uh, year-round washing facilities to the people that use the park? Your Worship, through to Councilor Shinbine, uh, Mr. Miller and I were just discussing this earlier this week. Uh, we have a potential opportunity, a potential uh, project at Gorge uh, using gas tax funding. And that uh, application project was just sent out by UBCM 
uh, earlier this week as council uh, received the same email. Uh, we are just developing now a, a grander plan to address that exact concern and partnering with potential some of our users at Gorge Park. So that will come forward uh, probably before the end of May, which is the deadline for gas tax with that. But at this moment in time, based on uh, where we're sitting with the uh, staff request for capital, it's a priority, but it's not the highest priority. But we figure that what we can do is partner that with some of our gas tax opportunity. And Mr. Miller and I will be working through those processes uh, within the next several weeks to bring back a bigger plan to council. Uh, thank you, and I do appreciate that. But uh, I just want to reiterate what I told you at the time. My concern was we're encouraging seniors to, to walk. We're encouraging the seniors to use the park. And I just had this vision of some poor old lady trying to deal with that porta potty. And it just, anyway, we shouldn't go there. But uh, it, it's just that, that was my concern was for our seniors. I, I, I don't, didn't feel that was all that safe. That's what I was getting at. So I'm glad to hear that it's there. I, I'm happy with that. It's not the same park. A park. The one at the... Council Park. Trying to identify it. <laughs> um, just to go back to uh, Zach's point, the billion, um, and I know you can't really, as you indicated, you can't really get into specifics because you do have a new Parks and Rec committee coming in, and that's one of the strategies going to be looking at. So no, without having to go into detail, I just wondered uh, generally yes or no that what your vision with that would be would be a, a revenue producing um, investment of some sort? Your Worship, through the Councillor Morrison, it's premature for me to, to speculate. Uh, okay. Where, where we're at, the previous Parks and Rec Advisory Committee provided staff some input on an interpretive tenant center design. Um, we hadn't gone farther back with that. We have not engaged the public in that, in that dialogue, uh, nor did we engage council. So what, what I wanted to do last year with the Parks Rec Advisory Committee was get a sense of where the temperament was. Uh, at that point, it allowed us to start staring around a strategic plan and uh, allocating the $20,000 for feasibility studies. There has been previous conversations about tea gardens, <coughs> uh, wedding, gazebo. wedding gazebos, and just, uh, demolishing the building and just converting it back to grassland, uh, the $20,000 would help us address that from a strategic perspective. The additional supplemental request of $25,000, if council so chose to this year remove the structure, that cost would be incurred at that time. Uh, so it still has an opportunity for council to have that input uh, and it will provide staff the direction uh, through the budget to pursue that as a top priority for 2012. Thank you. Further questions? Being none, I guess we're complete there. Thank you. Okay, Council, we need to go back and sharpen our pencils. Chair, I wanted to if I might ask uh, or confirm a basic question uh, for you then to Ms. Hurst. So on here we have funding sources addressed throughout this capital um, budget request for the um, maintenance and the um, equipment reserve fund, the capital project reserve fund. So this is where we're taking the money out. Um, every year, council has to replenish that fund and so I was trying to figure out how we decide how much goes into that fund and do all of these funding source requests reflect the money that we will take out this year and put back this year. So is it sort of a, a, a revenue neutral, I guess, I mean that's not the right term, but a sort of a neutral where what goes in comes out. Um, so the answer to the last question is no. It's not a, it's not a neutral. Um, we do contribute to the fund every year, but we don't just take out what we contribute. What we do is um, we put together all the requests. We look at the ending balance from the previous year to determine how much money we have to work with. We add in what we're going to contribute, and then we know what we have available for the year. But we also have to be aware that we don't want to drain the fund down 
below a certain level. And with our capital projects reserve fund, um, we try to maintain that and never deplete it lower than somewhere between five hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars. The uh, casino funds we get. Um, I'm sorry. We, uh, for contributions, so with the Capital Projects Reserve Fund, we contribute into that fund uh, $952,000 a year. So we contribute 952, that gets added to whatever was left from the previous year, and that's how, how much we know is available for this year's request, keeping in mind that we don't want to deplete it lower than um, five to $800,000. Um, and that's how we would go through and prioritize. We would initially put all the requests on uh, in the spreadsheet. We realized that we'd drain the fund to, I don't know, a $400,000 deficit, and then as staff we would go back and say, okay, now we, we can't fund everything that we want to fund, and that's how we go back and prioritize projects to get that fund to remain sustainable. Um, the Machinery and Equipment Depreciation Reserve Fund, uh, that is contributed to on a functional basis in that um, we have a, a long-term plan for, for instance, for example, for the fire department. We have a long-term plan for replacement of uh, vehicles and you work backwards to ensure that your annual contribution into that fund ensures that there's enough money in there in year five to replace you know, a certain vehicle and then in year seven or wherever it's scheduled to to uh, be replaced. That calculation is also done for um, the fleet vehicles, which is all the public works and parks uh, machinery and equipment. That it's also done for the IT and, uh, and or for the um, software, hardware, and telephone systems. And it is also done for some recreation services equipment. So we contribute to the Machinery and Equipment Depreciation Reserve Fund in the amount of $440,000 a year. And that's to fund uh, everything that you see on this page. And that fund as well, we look at not depleting that fund below um, a certain level. And I think if, you, if I go back to, um, with funding everything that's in these requests, the M&E Reserve Fund maintains maintain the balance at $1.5 million. So even after if after we contribute the four hundred and forty one thousand and then fund everything that's in these requests, we still have one point five million dollars left in that fund. Sorry, so that's in the M and E fund alone it's one point one point four. We've left uh, a balance of seven hundred thousand dollars in capital projects reserve fund. Um, and in casino revenue, uh, we've left a balance of 124000 In community works funding, even after funding, um, I think Scott, um, the majority of the, the project was yours, and it was close to a million dollars. We still have a balance left in that fund of $500,000. So if I could be clear then, so what is remaining is undesignated funds. That's to be carried forward to next year plus the contributions that we'll make to fund whatever <coughs> Thank you for the clarification. So I'm just going to say it one more time so I'm really clear. So for all of the things that have been requested on these sheets, we have sufficient money to cover all of it yes. in, and then also allow the appropriate balances to be carried over for the following year. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? So, Council, we need to go back through our sheets. Um, not sure where you'd like to start. Uh, my sense would be that uh, supplemental staff requests is probably the place to start. Easy to the end. Yeah. So under supplemental staff requests, we start... Do you want to do supplemental staff or just the general supplemental? Mm -hmm. I was thinking we'd do go right back to the beginning where we started, which is the just the supplemental request, not the actual staff. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I was looking at it in terms of staff, then oh. if the staff didn't have them, then some okay. of these others didn't have them. We, we can do it in that, in that order if you wish. It's totally up to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's where 
we should start. So we did star the uh, communications <laughs> IT. Uh, this is the one sheet, the separate sheet. Same sheet, yeah. Okay. Information. Yeah. And we start all four positions. So uh, let's uh, have discussion and some decisions around communications coordinator. Uh, so this was to uh, perhaps I'll, I'll just ask staff to just do a quick crazy as to what this is with each one. Uh, um, for administration communications coordinator, this is that uh, although our communications coordinator physically works a full time um, full time hours right now, only 0.6 of that is approved as a regular uh, regular position position as a communications coordinator, the other point four is actually working and supporting the Centennial Celebrations Committee. So at the end of uh, 2012, that position, communications coordinator position, goes back to point six, and we're requesting that it remain um, as full-time position. So this, this funding would then be to bring it up to uh, a, a FTE one? And uh, so I will open this up for discussion or questions, Council. Councilor Morrison. Um, I think my vote on this will be conditional upon um, upon a review of the, of the current job description. And the reason I say it, it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges because uh, what we currently have is a is a part time position. What we what we are what we are proposing to go to is a full time position, and with that full time hours, I see an expansion of responsibilities, um, and there are just a lot of question marks as to what those expanded responsibilities would be, and under what category, whether they be considered management responsibilities or exam staff responsibilities or union, uh, bargaining unit, um, uh, or traditional uh, municipal communications type work. So um, if I, as I said, my vote on this would be conditional on us having some control over what that final full time uh, expanded job description would be. So if I might make a suggestion uh, that what, what you're needing to do tonight is to approve in principle uh, and request a report back on options from staff. Uh, and, and so what you're saying is you want to have a, a look at what all those options might be at the end of the, to, to when we get to that full-time person, what is it going to look like? But you approve the idea of going to a full-time position in principle. In principle, and in, in, and in practice, if, I, if we get to see that final look, what it'll look like, say. final say, I guess, is what I'm not for. But yeah, I essentially agree with you. Okay, Councillor Hodgins. Well, I support in principle the need for this position. I see this position as being critical to our success long term. Good communications, sharing of information, all that goes along with the roles and responsibility of a position like this. I've heard it from residents, businesses, a definite need to better understand the business of the municipality, where we are, where we're going, uh, options and opportunities. So, so much of what we deal with when it comes to questions from residents and businesses, there seems to be a significant gap in our ability to provide quality information in a timely way. So my long-winded way of saying I support in principle and would look forward to all you know, the information coming back that identifies specifics around the roles and responsibilities. Thank you. Council, what we need to do is put forward a resolution and I've just sort of crafted something here and you, yeah, and you can, you can. Mm -hmm. 
Councillor Hunnity. Thank you, Chair. I wondered if I might go back um, just to refresh all of our um, thinking around this. So with this large for single sheet for the four additional um, workers, this is in relation to a 3.61% increase. Am I correct in that? So if, if we were um, inclined to um, want something less than 3.61, then it would be an opportunity then for us to craft this perhaps in a different way or offer other suggestions or, or decline. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Shinbai. It, it actually presented a good approach for this, so thank you. Uh, just a, if you will, a <coughs> question. Are we going to be, for each item that was flagged, decide at that point whether it stays, mm -hmm. gets amended, goes back for a report, comes back to us, or do we discuss them all and then it's one motion that covers all of them? That's my question. Well, and, that, and that's the direction that Councillor Hundleby suggested is that, in essence, if you go through these and you approve these, then what you are doing is saying um, this will meet a 3.61% increase. We will not meet the target of 2.56, I believe it was. The options, yes. So you, you're you're defining your tax rate basically based on on the acceptance of these, and that's why we have the different coloring. Saying blue is as you accept those, you're working at that level. So if council would like to try and reduce the rate, uh, go to the lowest rate, which is the two percent, two point whatever, two point five six rate. Uh, and then these options are not there. We cannot accept these positions. Or we need to rejig in some way, uh, ask staff to um, offer more options. And that certainly wouldn't happen tonight. But um, that's why it's been laid out the way it is. Does that make sense? I guess your worship it does. Well, I think we discussed all four at the same time right now, and then we can narrow it down. Because if we if we only accept one, it changes the rate slightly. If we accept all of them, it certainly uh, takes us out uh, of the uh, 2.56. Uh, is that a correct assumption, staff? Yes. Thank you. Just to clarify, Mr. Mayor, there is an op option beyond these positions in the remainder of the budget to still come in at 2.56. We could approve all four of the requested staff positions, look for reductions in other areas, and still meet. We potentially budget. could, yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Councilor Morgan. Just another, one more point of information. We're assuming that we're gonna, we're sort of zeroing in on 4.42 or 2.56, but those aren't necessarily what the final percentage increase would be. It could be any. So if we were to go ahead and prove these, uh, yes, that negates 2.56, as Councillor Hutchins said, we could do something else with the budget, but we could also do all sorts of things with the budget, and you know, we could end up with anything from 0% to 10% to or you know, any, any range whatsoever. So, yeah. so I just remind Council, we're not, you know, we're not picking one or the other option. We're, we, we, we will choose whatever option we end up with based on our decisions on each line item that we flagged. Yeah, absolutely, Thank you. absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, however you want to go through it, um, come, let's start with Councillor Shinbein and see how we go forward. Uh, just what, what uh, the, Just before you, you do, uh, staff wanted to clarify I, something. I just wanted to point out that there aren't just the three scenarios. There's the other scenario that staff actually recommended, which is actually three point one seven. And that is the use of, of surplus. Um, the surplus, I am, and Mary, you can caution me if, if, you, if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the surplus will be 
at least $100,000. So in all likelihood, the 3.17 will actually be lower than 3.17 with everything that staff have recommended being approved. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's probably best to do individual, go through it, and then we come to the end and we figure out what have we ended up with. And then if council feels it still needs to be different, then we can go through and review again. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for the clarity, everyone. Okay, so Councillor Shinbein. Uh, well, it's just, a, it's just a clarification. Yep. If, uh, <clears throat> for the staff, if of course this, uh, I'm not even gonna put a number on it, but let's say the staff and things approve, of course, we're acknowledging the fact that that's a permanent increase to the budget. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Does council want me then to come back to my uh, suggested resolution for communication co coordinator? Are we there yet, Councillor Hundley? Uh, thank you. I'm not sure that we are. Um, perhaps uh, if I make my comments, it uh, might become clear as what, what we should do, because uh, I'm not clear myself. Um, as far as the communications coordinator is concerned, because it is in our plan, our council priorities plan that we have developed, um, I am in support of the position to go full time. Having said that, um, okay, I'll go on to the next one, the information technology. And um, having worked in a position where IT was crucially important and where technical support was absolutely um, requirement in order to do my job, I would need that. So I see the need for that as well. The question I had around the technician was, is it possible to contract out that position? And what are the trade-offs for doing that? Uh, I, I personally feel that in-house is better. I have worked with both. But that was in my particular situation. In this situation, I don't know that. And so I wanted to ask the question, perhaps exploring whether that might be uh, another option for us, and whether that may or may not you know, have merit, I, I'd like to kind of find out. Um, I'll uh, point out that it is within your report, the last paragraph down uh, speaks to option two that's offered up and the positives and negatives of contracting, and then perhaps staff have more talk to offer. Okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Perhaps some um, other counselors <coughs> might have some comment as well. Um, I, I think she, the, the points that are made in the report um, are certainly relevant. The council um, is still not comfortable that all alternatives have been explored. I think um, the resolution or a resolution that's similar to the one for communications coordinator saying you approve the position in principle uh, conditional on a report coming back to council exploring all alternatives for fulfilling the function addresses, because uh, that report coming back would also address any contracting issues and alternatives. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I'm essentially in support of that one, also for law <coughs> enforcement. I, um, I think we've certainly heard from residents that by law enforcement uh, is needed. And uh, as far as the parks, uh, wages and benefits for an additional student, I, I think we have to uh, also accept that one simply because if we've put in islands, they need to be maintained. The last thing I would want is to have put in planted islands and then not maintain them for lack of um, $23,000 per year. So uh, I would be in support of, you know, I guess all of these, I'm just, a little tentative about putting that 3.17, that's better than 3.61. Um, but still, I would like to see something less than 3%, but um, 
Uh, maybe we could get there in other ways. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Graham. Um, all of these positions that are listed here are tied very closely, as staff I know tried to do with our, our strategic plan, so I do believe they need to be in there. I have heard from residents about shared services, but I think at this current time, we can't just jump into shared services. That's going to take research. That's going to take time. So we need something in, in the interim. Um, but it's definitely, you know, something once we're done this bu uh, budget process, or it could be as some of those reports as longer term, um, for as uh, Councillor Shinbine said, the long term budget implications of full time staff. Is there any way to look at shared services for some of these as we, you know, go forward? But we need something in the in the interim. Um, another option um, that I like to throw in the ring every once in a while is co-op students, especially for IT. Um, they can come in and help us get things caught up, get certain programs going. Um, uh, co-op students are, are a great resource, and I heard from you, Vic, how we're having a hard time retaining the, the kids that go to the university. They come, 75% are from out of province, and then 75% of them leave once they graduate. So. We'd like to keep some of that talent, so co-op is one way of doing that because it shows them what we have in our community. So just putting that out there as an option. But these are tied very closely to our strategic plan, so I do believe they need to be in the budget. Any further discussion, comments at this time? My, I, I have a concern around how we're structuring the wages and benefits for the additional student uh, in that we're, we're building it in to the annual core. So it's an annual student, annual student, annual student, annual student. It's not, it's not an option um, for something else. And, and um, I'm also surprised at the wage for a, an annual student from May till September. Um, so I understand the need, but um, I, I would like to see that. Um, I, I, would, I would prefer to see that as a sort of a one-off contract, let's assess it, uh, are there other ways to go type of thing, so that we don't get tied in all the time to adding and staying in, in, in that added position. Uh, by law enforcement, I certainly support increasing that to full time and, and uh, exploring the, the changes that uh, we would like to do to make it a, a very efficient position. Uh, having looked at this IT report, I have found it uh, very informative. And when you look at the IT support, other municipalities have of similar size uh, compared to us. Wow, our guys are really working overtime. Uh, and uh, I know I also give them a lot of work. So I do understand uh, the need for greater support there. And really they're kind of that nervous system of the, uh, the, the mechanism of, of the body you know, if you don't have your IT, that, that uh, if it goes on the fritz, the rest of us aren't all that productive uh, because we're tied in so, to, so much to our technology. Communications coordinator as well. I, I would like to see us have this information come back uh, and explore the options of how we do this. So m my sense would be uh, that I would support some a resolution in, in principle, um, pending further information brought uh, back by staff around the opportunities and options with these positions. I, I still have some discomfort with the uh, parks positions. Any further discussion? Otherwise, we can entertain a motion or something. Councilor Morris. And just if I could be uh, clear, you know, website refresh was a very important part of our um, planning outcomes. And I'm trying to figure out where exactly they fit with these new positions, because um, we keep hearing these are important to our strategic plan. So communications coordinator, to me, would write content 
um, and perhaps have some input on design of, of the website. And on information technology would have more of the technical aspects of the of the web. And so if we are adding these these two positions, or sorry, increasing the, the communications coordinator and, and then the information technology staff uh, increase as well, are these two positions both going to be contributing towards a better website, more public friendly website for the community, or would it just be just one of them? Um, I would expect that the new information technology position itself wouldn't be the one that would be assisting. What it would be doing is taking work off of Jeremy's desk, and Jeremy would be the one that would be assisting. Essentially the same. Yeah. Okay, so so basically, we do see by by adding these positions, we see a net benefit to our website with I do. additional uh, support. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor uh, Mackay. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I don't have a problem really with any of these positions. I think we need them. Um, the park student, uh, I imagine they're probably in the university. Okay, so they, they're working for degrees. I guess they're, they've got degrees coming, so they need the money, okay? And to get a university student to get down on their hands and knees and pick weeds, uh, shows that they've got the desire to move ahead. And so for $22,000, I don't really have a problem with that. And uh, the communication coordinator, I like what uh, we discussed last night, that if uh, we approve, what we're doing tonight is approving these dollars, and that the uh, Ms. Hirsch will come forward with recommendations on how things will go. If that's the, what we're looking at, then I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Hundley. Thank you. Uh, so I guess I'm getting uh, close to uh, coming to uh, my own sense of uh, where I think we should go, and and I'm I'm going to support all of it, um, including the parks. I think because uh, I know because um, I supported the islands. I don't want to see them to go back to bricks or cement, and so I'm still feeling that if we have taken the made the decision to go forward with the <coughs> islands that's planted, that we need to maintain those. And to me, it, it's not an option uh, to whether we do it one year and not the next. I think that we have to kind of bite the bullet and say, we'll do it. For me, it would be a, a better solution. This is a better solution than hiring a another half an FTE or a full FTE uh, for park staff in order to do this. And I think this is, a, a pretty cost-effective way for us to move forward on it. So I will, I'm sort of prepared to um, bite the bullet, go forward with all of these with the one caveat about the communications coordinator. I do agree that uh, I'd like to see a little bit more information uh, about that, but I'm willing to set aside some monies to, to work towards it. Thank you. So are you making a motion at this point or will you wait for the whole I'll wait and see if there's any further. Okay, Councilor Shinbai. <clears throat> uh, thank you, I'm prepared to support uh, what's here is presented. Uh, again, with uh, the condition that, uh, especially with the, the potential for contracting out some of this work, that that be investigated. Uh, so I'm willing to give my support to, uh, as presented, provided that that information follows up. Any uh, further uh, discussion at this time? If not, I'd like somebody to try and let's pull this together in terms of a motion. Just Council. one last comment in further to Councillor Shinbein's comments um, in, in terms of looking at making this somewhat of a conditional vote. I, I, we had a discussion yesterday about the um, future of shared services with bylaw officers, and, and I, I think that was hinted towards tonight as well. So I'd like that to also be noted that, um, yes, this year it's too early to go towards shared services with our bylaw enforcement, but uh, certainly um, in next year's budget, I think we can anticipate that uh, being a possibility. I don't know if I guess I'm suggesting a temporary status to this 
this uh, employee leaving out of here until, until we figure out what we need to share services. But I will uh, move the uh, move the recommendation by staff to the four positions. And do I need to put in principle in that motion? You do if you want to have these discussions and then have a, an alternative at the end. So I will definitely include in, in principle in the motion. So with the, I move the recommendation uh, on new staffing levels from staff in principle. And would, in, let, if I can, uh, I've just written something out and it might sure. help you. Sure. Uh, you know, I'll withdraw the motion. No, 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 I, I need you to do it, but I am just wanted to try and help you with the okay. crafting the words that I heard uh, from staff, really, basically, is how it works. Um, council support, in principle, uh, the, the positions, and request staff to bring back report to council with the options uh, of, of, what was the rest of the wording that you suggested? Uh, yeah. That you approve in principle the positions conditional on a report exploring alternatives and options. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Yes. And, and the key word you said contingent on, I think, is that right? Yes. Conditional on. Condi conditional on, sorry. That, that's, that. I'll move that motion. Thank you. Oh, Second. Okay. Further discussion, Councillor Hundley. Thank you. This is for clarification. So, do I understand then that the motion includes uh, option looking at options for all four positions, or for three positions, or two positions? I I think for all sorry, for the chair. My intention of the motion would be all four. I, I think we heard also some hesitation on the on the parks, uh, the student parks worker as well. That might be something that could be perhaps. Last month than May to May to December, maybe perhaps it's June to June to August or something. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what the options are. So I would include all. Four. The intention is for all four. Yeah. Thank you. I, I can support that. Okay. Further discussion. Uh, question. Motion, question on motion. Well, you want to call the more? No, 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 not that. I mean, a question. <laughs> question. Okay. An inquiry. An inquiry. Go on for it. An inquiry on the motion. Okay. Um, when we talked about uh, uh, when we just said the condition on report from the staff, and I had brought up uh, a contract, would that, that also? Would be one of the options. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't have to be stated. Doesn't have to be stated. Okay. Now I, we'll call. I, I understand the direction. And it's now, not for you to. Uh, are, are you ready? Uh, because I will call the question, unless there's further input. Yeah. Okay, I will call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Those opposed? Uh, just Councillor Hodgins. Opposed. Thank you. Okay. Now, we'll go to the supplemental items.
changing a 31-year uh, policy with no review of that policy. So if, if you're thinking that you still want to eliminate it from the budget, it shouldn't be eliminated. It should be a conditional approval upon review. Yes, thanks for the clarification. That, that's my recommendation. Um, Lori, can you go through, you, you talked about 31 years, uh, just for, for mm -hmm. new counselors, the, where we, where, what we've done in the past. Right, we went back to, um, the, I talked last night that it was a bylaw and a policy, and so uh, today we went back and looked at the policy. The very first policy or bylaw that was in effect. Lori, can you use the mic? The, the first bylaw that was in effect. This is pay for acting CA. First bylaw that was in effect um, for uh, employees and officers of the organization was uh, passed by Municipal Council on the 27th of April, 1981. And it included a, um, a section on an officer or an employee, or an employee who is required to perform the duties of, a, of any person in a superior office or employment for more than one week shall during such time be paid in addition to his or her normal pay 5%. That was, has been in effect since 1981. It was changed uh, recently, or updated recently, in November of 2011, so uh, just a few months ago. Um, and we actually split it from a, um, strictly a bylaw. We, we put it uh, as partially into a bylaw and partially into a, a council policy. And in the council policy, we really just um, repeated the 5% increase. An officer or an exempt employee that has appointed been appointed to such acting position shall be compensated by a 5% increase in their regular rate of pay during such period of appointment. So um, that, that bylaw or policy has been in effect since 1981. So Council, we do have a policy in place. Should you want to revisit that policy uh, that is within your purview, but we have an existing policy that we meet uh, or or do and it, within the time frame that we have I don't think we could go through a policy review this year. Um, Councillor Hundleby. Um, thank you chair. Uh, through you to Ms. Hurst. I was curious if this is the usual practice in other municipalities. Um, I know that it is in other arenas but in other municipalities is it a common occurrence for uh, staff in an assumed position to get the extra 5%? Uh, I can only speak to two other municipalities that I've worked in and the regional district, and it, that is absolutely the, the common practice. It's also a <coughs> common practice and a condition in collective agreements that the uh, union employees are also, it, it's really mirroring the union uh, collective agreement. Thank you, and so then uh, secondarily, is it part of contracts that are provided to senior staff? When senior staff are um, employed uh, with us, they, um, they receive an employment letter. They don't have contracts. Um, although uh, after a recent workshop, they're virtually the same thing. When we um, offer someone employment, we send them an employment, an offer letter. In that letter, this bylaw is referred to as being the governing um, document for their employment. Thank you. Uh, I'm not in favor of uh, changing. Thank you. Uh, Council, I would like to offer direction that you approve this. If you want to review the policy at a later date, that's perfectly acceptable. But. Uh, this is a policy that is in place currently. And uh, uh, so something that uh, I believe we should stand by. And I would ask that somebody put forward the recommendation to deal with this now. I move that the pay for acting CAO remain within the budget. Thank you, is there a second? Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor uh, Shinba. <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. In my humble opinion, uh, 
I look at this and I see, okay, it's a little bit extra cash. Bottom line, it's extra money. You know, and given that we're looking at constraints, that we're looking at trying to save money for the taxpayers, I think this would be an admirable gesture by the staff to forgo that $7,000. And I know you won't, but I think it's an admirable thing to do. And uh, I mean, that, to me, that shows leadership. Anyways, I can't support it, Your Worship. Further discussion? Okay, Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Those opposed? Yeah, Councilor Mackay and Councilor Chinbine opposed. Thank you. So, just a point of order, then we are going to be doing, you know, do we need to pass a motion to say that we're going to review that policy? If you'd like to make a motion that we review that policy, uh, just to get it on the books so that, that we don't lose track of it, I'm happy that if you if you want to do that at this point. Yeah, the reason I didn't vote support was because I thought that, that there was a discussion that we would do a more appropriate um, uh, review of that policy in a different uh, forum than the budget discussion. So I will move that uh, that um, staff be directed to prepare a report, um, not unlike what we just heard from the CAO, uh, with options. Does that, does that give you the direction that you require in this? Thank you. Okay, so you have a uh, um, shaker. Uh, further discussion? Okay, and the motion, please, um, it's getting late, is, is that we'll bring back a, a report and a review, do a review of this policy. Okay. Yeah, and just to, to speak to it, okay. right to the chair. Thank like you. See, from what I've heard, the, the rationale is that we've been doing this for 30 years, and it seems like anecdotally we, we think that other people are doing it as well. I, I need to hear something more than just we've been doing it forever, so therefore we should be doing it. <laughs> um, with no no offense to the, that, that was the explanation. Um, I, yeah, so. I've got further explanations if you want me to go through them. Well, yeah. I think that, that I, would I, form I didn't want to give the impression yeah. that I'm saying it's been in place for 30 yeah, years. Fair enough. And I, I think that report will have the further explanation. Thank you. So I will call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Those opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, Councillor Hundleby, myself, and Brahim opposed. Okay. That, now we go down to uh, local grants. Our, now, in terms of starring, did we star all grants, so intermunicipal social I got to start inside local. Okay. Everybody else agree? Uh, Councillor Brain. I think one of the reasons why we starred it was um, the 200 or 2,115 that used to be in local grants got taken out and put into general, like into legislative but it didn't actually come out of the local grants and we wanted it taken out of local grants as well, I believe. Like we wanted it to be reflective of coming out of local grants and permanently going into somewhere else. Something that, like that. That was part of it and to look at the overall amount that we put in the local grants uh, amount. Were staff able to come up with the, the number, the amount that we currently do? <coughs> have in local grants because there was some discussion yeah, about it. I'll say it was 114,000 is in okay. the last year. So, so the discussion was around whether we reduce that overall amount. Councillor Hundleby. Thank you. My understanding is that we have flagged both, both the municipal social service and the local grants. Um, that was my desire anyways. I think we should look at it. Even if we decide to keep it, I think we bears looking at it. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Brain? Um, I quite like the, and, and just for a lack of a better term, the 3.61% option for the grants. It's just not increasing them as we do every year, taking that, and then taking that 2100 out um, 
because I don't think we can decrease it this year because we're, you know, I think there's going to be more people coming, so people are going to get less. It's going to be a tightening of belt because we're not going forward. It was 114,000 last year because we had a carryover. This year we won't, I don't believe we'll have the carryover, so it won't be 114,000 that we'll be giving out. So it will appear less anyways, in a sense, to the people. So I think if we just don't increase it and do the 3.61% and take out that 2100, um, it helps us in our tax increases. Like it, it, it's a compromise for some of the, the residents and it's a, it's a, a step forward. In, you know, letting the local grants people know that the, bike, the, the belt has tightened. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Hundleby, did you've already spoken the first time around or? Yes, but I think I wanted to just add in one more thing because uh, Councillor Bray mentioned about the, the others and I would agree with that. The other concern that was raised last year was about permissive tax exemptions and that I understood was going to be reviewed by the local grants committee as they reviewed uh, all the applications. So I don't know that that actually affects this number. I don't believe so, but I, I wanted to also highlight the fact that we wanted to look at that as well. Any comment from staff on that? Sure, I, I uh, dealt with the grants first and then the points of tax exemptions. Um, so for 2011, you're right, we had a carry forward from the previous year of $11,000, which made our total available for last year uh, for local grants of $108,000. The balance, though, going into 2012, the balance available without this increase is 93,448. That's what you have for local grants. The total, um, uh, and then they, we have 15,487 for social service grants. Then you add, if you add these two increases, you have a total grant of 113,183 for both the local grant and social service. If you don't increase <coughs> them and just leave them at the levels of last year, what you what you would be saying is that we have ninety three thousand four hundred and forty eight for local grant and fifteen thousand four hundred and eighty seven for social service grants. So those are the numbers that you're dealing with. Um, permissive tax exemptions, you can review those for this year. They will not affect this year's budget. The way permissive tax exemptions work is that they are approved in um, BC assessment time. So when BC assessment finalizes their assessments, they do that in October of the year before. So that the permissive tax exemptions that apply for this year have already been approved by BC assessment in October of last year. So no matter what you do, you can review them this year, but the impact on the budget will not be seen until 2013. Thank you for that clarification. Councillor Brain. I'm hoping I can put forth a, a motion at this point in time. Um, Before you do, I'd just like to add my comments and then I don't think it's going to affect the outcome in any way, but um, I think that we clearly heard from um, the forums that this was an area that there will always be a need for us and, and the need will always be overflowing. The question is, is where can we best place our dollars to benefit 17,000 or to benefit smaller groups? Um, and it is with great difficulty, um, but I think that I would like to see us reduce this amount slightly um, such that it, it it gives that indication that we need that we're continuing to try and hone in on what is the best case for seventeen thousand, and um, you know there there are a number of very worthy causes out there that perhaps we can mix and match in different years and and assist and they can find other help help. Um, that's my feeling that. Uh, if you if you continue to add, at some point, 
um, you start to lose um, your overall uh, ability to, to look at the greater picture. And we're certainly not there, but I, I don't support an increase this year, I guess is what I'm saying. And I would certainly support a, a token decrease just to say times are tough, we need to look at the big pictures. And we don't want to increase taxes uh, significantly because that's a big picture. Now you can put forward your motion. <laughs> um, and help me, staff, please, if I'm having challenges. Um, I move that we keep the uh, inter-municipal social service and local grants um, at a 0% increase for this year, for this budget year, and that uh, we take the 2,115 out of the local grants and put it with the legislative for the Tourism Victoria membership. Second. Do I have a seconder? Second. Discussion? No discussion? I'll call the question. Councillor Hunnaby. I would just like to offer that um, I sit on the CRD Arts Committee and this year committee elected to also hold the line on grants and so there is no grant uh, increases and I, I think it, it's a reasonable thing in light of all the difficulties we're all having um, and for me that is kind of like a, a statement because there's no increase. Thank you. Councillor Hodgins. I won't be able to support the motion and, and uh, my position is we should be looking at a significant reduction. I would think a 50% reduction in grants would be appropriate. So. Thank you. Further comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion? We have the Can we have the motion read, please? Just so I'm clear. Um, you're moving that you keep the intramunicipal grant at 0% increase for 2012 and that we take the 2,115 out of local grants and put it with the Tourism Victoria membership fee. Thank you. Everybody okay with that? I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion? And those opposed? Is there an alternate motion that we, you would like to put forward? Motion that uh, we uh, look at a 50 percent reduction in grant monies available. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your motion? <laughs> Further discussion. So can we just get the dollars then? What the we got a percentage? But yeah, just a, through the chair, a point of clarification: 50 percent reduction in the local grant. And the social service or for both? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Councillor uh, Brain and then Handelby. I understand the, the spirit or the, the idea behind um, the reduction and, and, and the that part I'm not uh, against at all. 50% um, I think is really stiff, not only um, I see things closing. Um, we have a lot of agencies that get money from us and some of them have already said that they won't ask for money this year um, because they know times are tough but I think 50% is just that's not that that's that's a pretty drastic cut and I'm not sure it would do it would help anybody you know thank you uh, I have Councillor Hundleby and then Councillor Mackay Thank you, Chair. Um, I will not be supporting the motion. I've sat on the um, local grants committee uh, for at least a couple of years, and there is such huge need out there, especially with the downloading from other governments. It's not just uh, feel-good stuff. For some people, it is um, quite literally the difference between living and not living. I feel very strongly that we keep at least uh, what we have. Uh, for some people it is, uh, they make the money stretch and I think that there's, 
other ways that we cut if we need to, but I would really hate to see the cuts here. I think that's very drastic. It might be useful for the um, members of council who have not served on local grants to actually see where the money went and to what it went to. Uh, I will cite examples of the Rainbow Kitchen. Um, I will cite examples of the um, Peer Society, the um, That some of the the the, uh, the student things, that the children things, it, it's kind of sort of out of my uh, sort of uh, memory bank right now. But it would be useful, perhaps, for other members of council to see exactly where the money was spent and perhaps how it was spent. It is a rigorous uh, request. They have to fill in an application form. They have to give us their. Um, their business plans, they have to give us their financial picture. We expect them to come back the following year and say this is how we spent the money. And I think it's really um, important for us to know how that money was spent. I mean, there is um, accountability for the money that we've given. And so I believe that we should be supporting our residents because that's mostly who gets the money and who gets the benefit from the money. So supporting our residents uh, to get that. The Squirrel Neighborhood House gets a significant portion, and we know, I know, that that money has been well spent uh, because we have a lot of families who are young, single, uh, children who are uh, in impoverished situations, and I think that this really helps a lot. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the role of local government because I don't believe it is. But without our support, they will not have and I, I cannot support it. Thank you. Councillor McKay, you had your hand. Yeah, I have one question. If um, we're talking a 50% cut, where does the other 50% go? You're talking so, about having a 50% reduction in, the, in grants. Right. Okay, where's that other 50% go? Like if you've got 93,400, you're going to cut that in half? Right. So where does the other half of that go? Back into the coffers, general coffers. No, no, we just would have collected as tax revenue. Yeah, we wouldn't have the money. That's right. It reduces your tax. It reduces the tax increase. And so what percentage would that drop it down? Okay, so I'll, I'll answer Councilor Morrison's question first through the chair. Fifty percent reduction would be fifty-four thousand dollars for fifty-four thousand four hundred and sixty-seven. And if you want to know what percentage tax increase, it, it is about 0.23 percent. One more time. 0.23 percent. 0.23 of a percent. <coughs> Council, uh, I have to say, um, I'm requesting a reduction, but 50% to me is very uncomfortable. Um, and so, uh, I, I support I support the idea, um, but I, I have great difficulty supporting the amount. Um, I'm wondering whether, um, uh, we can certainly call the question, but if I can offer up an alternative, um, that we uh, take a look at where monies went in the last year to councillors, councillor, councillor Hundleby's point of giving you familiar, familiarity uh, with how these monies have been distributed in the past, whether that would help. Um, I can certainly call the question or we can um, uh, table this motion pending uh, receiving that information. So oh, I'll leave that to you. Councillor Morrison. Um, I'm also very torn on this issue too. I, I, I don't want anyone to be hurt as a result of this decision. And I think um, that we are, I, I, I worry that we're rushing through this uh, and it is a much bigger discussion. My concern is that, as the mayor said, 17,000 actually is now close to 16,000 people. Um, 
are subsidizing operations that aren't exclusively Esquimalt-based uh, operations. Uh, and I don't, I, and I can name some organizations, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that information will come to us. But there are organizations that do get these grants that, well, they may have an address in Esquimalt, or um, they may have some sort of connection to Esquimalt. They actually serve much broader uh, than a much broader region than Esquimalt. Uh, I would love to be able to put conditions on these grants that they have to be for the benefit as much as, as possible exclusively to Esquimalt uh, residents. Um, and I think that sort of addresses a bit of the mayor's concern that, you know, we, we don't seem to have a lot of control over um, benefiting our own community as opposed to uh, beyond our community. And I know that's a bit of a, probably a bit of an awkward and unfair uh, condition, but the money is tight. And I'm, I, as, a, as a Squamal taxpayer, I don't want <laughs> to have to um, sacrifice more and more each year in, in property tax increases uh, towards supporting operations that aren't exclusively part of my community, and especially when that is the responsibility of the provincial and federal government. Um, so, I'm, I'm trying to get towards a comfort zone. I, perhaps 50% is a bit rash and a bit, bit rushed, but uh, and, and, you know, as a member of the, of the Grants Committee, I, I don't want to be in a situation where we're just simply having to say no to everybody. Um, but I do want a lot more control over those grants, and perhaps by limiting them somewhat, we'll force some control, and we'll force some, some uh, concentration on, on putting those funds in, into, into exclusively Squamalt organizations. Um, so that, I, I, would, I will actually vote against the, the 50%, but I will uh, entertain a, some other motion that, that moves toward <coughs> what the mayor was uh, suggesting. Any further discussion on this motion? Councillor Shinbai. I uh, seconded this motion because for that exact reason to allow the discussion uh, so that we can talk about it. I do think 50% is a little harsh. But I do believe that we, the, the reduction has to be made there. I agree with uh, Councillor Morrison that uh, it, the benefit has to, there has to be a much more direct benefit for Squimal. <coughs> However, uh, when we're faced with this overall budget, and we don't seem to be finding a whole lot of savings everywhere else, what is left? So, uh, from that point of view, I'm not going to support, I would not support the motion because I believe 50% is a little too strong, but I do agree 100% with uh, Councillor Hodgins that we have to definitely reduce this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hodgins. My position with respect to the motion and the significant reduction comes back to, and I do have a, an understanding of how the monies are applied, and, and you know, it's a, it's a real challenge, there's no doubt, but there comes a point in time where one has to suggest what is the role and responsibility of a municipal government. And, you know, it's, we know that other levels of government are handing off the ball, and if we keep taking the ball, we're not going to be able to afford basic services for the community that we seek to serve. So, as much as it's a real challenge, I believe there are other options and opportunities for individuals that really need that money, as Councilor Hunter be suggested, to live. So, I'm thinking 50% is conservative. My real intent would be to eliminate the grants. Any further discussion? Councillor Hadleby. Thank you. This is not really on the topic, but it's somewhat related. And that is, this is the supplemental request, but we also have, I believe, CORE, where Esquimalt provides $10,000 a year for the housing fund. That housing fund, I don't know where it, whether it or how much, it affects or impacts Esquimalt residents and how 
it, it might work. So is there an opportunity to reduce money from there? I'm struggling to remember whether we, you know, under what sort of basis we did that, whether it was a special resolution that just goes on, but I mean, it's not reflected in the supplemental, and other <coughs> members of council who were not there then may not remember or realize that there's a whole bunch of other money that's going out that's not related to this. So I would uh, ask um, through the chair to staff um, if they could please uh, fill in the gaps that I've Unable to do it. I, I believe the amount uh, for money that you're referring to is not 10,000, it's 40,000. Yeah, thank you. 40, and that's to the CRD Housing Trust Fund, and it's now um, initially when we started paying that, it was a separate item in the budget, but it was that was only uh, done that way until uh, the CRD rolled that into one of their functions, and it's now part of their requisition, and you'd have to go to, through their opting out process to not make that payment at this point in time. Thank you. I'm going to call the question on the motion. All those, if, if, do, you, do you want the motion read back? Um, you're moving uh, 50% reception in grants available to other organizations as it's titled on the right. Including both pots, basically. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? those opposed. Thank you. So clearly we have a, a lot of discussion on this topic. Um, does anyone want to offer up one more try or give me some direction where you'd like to go? Would you like to think on this one? And anybody remotely happy with the 20% reduction? I am. Well, I was going to say 25. <laughs> say 10. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, the <laughs> yeah. Just throwing out numbers. My concern is that this seems very uh, random or arbitrary, like 20 percent, then we go to 25, yeah. and I, I, I'd rather have a, I'd rather delay this issue, table this issue, but uh, council do as you wish. But I, I, I don't think we really don't know what 50 percent or 20 percent or 25 percent does. And, other than just seeing the dollar amounts, uh, I think we need a lot more education on this. Uh, I certainly do. Move to table, pending additional information around the local grants uh, provided and passed. Second. Just second. Second for discussion. There's no discussion on tabling. <laughs> then no, I can't. <laughs> second. There is no dis there is no seconder for your tabling motion. Councilor Bray. My one thing is you can't, we can't definitively say like really I know it a lot of it boils down to who applies for local grants and every year it Excuse is a little me. different. So I'm confused. there's no motion on the floor. No, there isn't. We we so Councilor Hunley doesn't need a seconder for a motion that doesn't. Not, there is no motion. She moved to table. And nobody okay. seconded. And nobody seconded. Yeah. We're, st we're back to having no motion on the floor. We're back to having no motion on the floor. Okay. okay. <coughs> Councilor Gray. It's hard to get more information because a lot of it is based as to, I, I think from what I'm hearing is it's, you know, who's applying, are they local, are they, are there, but every year those that apply change slightly and the amounts they change and the reasons that they apply change. So it really is just simply a dollar value. How much are we as a community willing to give out to for local grants? I don't think there's any more information that we can give than that. Once those who apply, apply, then we can decide how much we give them. But it really is just that. It's, it's a number. How much are we as a community willing to give out to our community. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to move that there be a 20% reduction to the local grant and intermunicipal social services grants for the budget year of 2012. Is there a seconder to that motion? 
I will second. Is there any discussion on that motion? Councillor Handelby. Thank you. I, I certainly understand the reason for going less, and I'm the one that said I'd like to have it under 3%, so obviously it has to come from somewhere. I think that it's difficult for nonprofits to operate, and I think that by doing it without any prior warning, will make it even more difficult for them. And so I'm reluctant to actually go to 20%, uh, although I do understand um, the reason why. I just feel that there needs to be some warning on for, for them. And I know that all other funders are going through the same exercise. And so for some of them, it would mean a huge hit. And so I'm really reluctant to look at 20%. I think again, it's up to the discretion of the local yeah. grants committee as to, you know, how this affects each and every proponent that comes forward. So, you know, uh, it comes back to Councillor Brain's comment: is dollar value, and then how do we distribute it? Any further discussion? If not, I'm going to call the question on the motion. All those in favor of 20% reduction? Those opposed? Councillor Shinbein, Handelby, and Hodgins opposed. Motion carries. Council, um, we are at quarter to ten, and uh, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, what I would like to do is to, to certainly get through supplementals at this point, recognizing we are going to back up the process a little bit in terms of dates, but that's we got to do what we got to do. Just to keep something on the table, I was wondering if I could put forth a motion to review the permissive tax exempts this year in time for, um, so for next year's whatever process. Second. Discussion on that. Seeing mm -hmm. none. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Council, I'll ask you to extend the meeting. Uh, make a motion to extend the meeting. Uh, I would suggest a quarter after at this point. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Those opposed? Councillor Hodgins, Councillor Shinbein opposed. We now move off of page one uh, and council on page two. Were there flags? Yeah, one of them, please. And I think it was to do it day, sir. Through the chair, um, we just have a couple of housekeeping items. So with the uh, motion to the reduction in the grants, I'd also like to get a resolution to, um, to not, we have a policy on grants and then both increasing the amount. Um, I don't think we want to bring the policy back for review, but we need a resolution <coughs> for the budget year 2012, just to allow, thank you. I'll move that back to the motion. Discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. So through the chair, just a, a clarification. <coughs> so on the permissive exemptions, do you want that review to happen with the local grant committee first with recommendations to council, or do you want it to come straight to council? I will give my my thoughts on this, and then the rest of you can certainly. I would like to do it as a council, <coughs> so that we all have a clear understanding, or at least are engaged in the, in the discussion. We can then take it out into the further committee. Um, I find it that when it comes committee to us, I don't have the whole picture in front of me, so I can't make those informed decisions as comfortably as I'd like. Okay. Everybody agree. Do we need motion to amend that motion? Do we say for that? Just direction. Okay. Okay. Uh, under uh, uh, on this page, uh, policing uh, the increase in his final share of policing was three hundred and eighty-nine. Any 
anyways, uh, is there um, discussion around that amount uh, and whether you would like to um, make uh, any changes to that? We'll I had a small discussion today. Um, Victoria is certainly looking at all of their numbers, but the mayor of Victoria is quite <coughs> worried that because of the day that Canada Day celebrations falls on this year, uh, I believe it's a Friday or Saturday or Sunday, it, that he is worried um, about the consequences of reducing that. Well, I thought I would try and see whether there was some opportunity for discussion. But it didn't sound like. That being said, this information is going to their council on Thursday, and we may want to um, delay our thoughts on this until after we hear what council, what their council has to say about their budget. Councilor Hunter. Thank you. I, I have two things. Uh, around the police one, I've actually written on here in camera topic. So was that not something that we... There, uh, there were uh, many discussions around policing and some of them are in camera, yes. So <coughs> just so we the reduction of this one is not? So you, if you want to have a, a wholesome discussion uh, around in camera items, then we would have to move in camera. At which point, at this point, what I would say is, is um, we will we will delay that discussion. Okay. okay so we'll keep the flag. Uh, council wants to have some in-camera discussion around this evening. if I might, I'm having trouble with the map. So if we were to reduce um, our um, local grants and intermunicipal social services by 20%, what does that make our um, taxation uh, based on the three original 3.17? Uh, 20% reduction of grants is 21,787, and it brings you down to 3.07. Thank you. I did that all in my head. Oh, this is right then. Yeah, I, I can't do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you. 3.7. Okay, so, Council, let's move on to transportation services. Let's tackle some easy ones. Uh -huh. That's page three. And I had uh, the road condition evaluation every five years, uh, the traffic study for bike lanes on Lamson. Mm -hmm and road study for Lyle Street uh, in, in that section. Were there any others on the page? Mm -hmm. I've got uh, recycling charges increased to the contract right at the very bottom. Yes, thank you. Okay, Let, let's deal with the transportation. Um, and let's start with the road condition evaluation. So there was discussion uh, around the value of this. Councilor Brain? Um, yeah, I don't think we can take that out, but I would, I would, my my thought would be to put that one back in and take out Lyle Street and Lampson Street. Uh, and just so flip them and actually come out ahead by 10 minutes. Are you making a motion then? Sure, I will move that we put back into the budget or keep in the budget the road condition evaluation for every five years and take out uh, the road study for Lyle and the traffic study for bike lane on Lamson. Second it. Is yep. there discussion on that motion? Thank you. Uh, I'm in general agreement of the, um, uh, the proposal. Instead of actually removing it all together, I'd like to see it deferred. Uh, to, and this may be a friendly amendment, to uh, 2013 budget. Totally friendly. No? And, and just to clarify that the, um, that all of these items are included in that scenario. 
already. We, we recognize that. Yeah. Yep. No. But if we take something out, it keeps lower. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 But you talk about adding back the 50,000. Oh, sorry. 50,000 already in there. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 I think you meant for the flag. Yeah. yeah. 50,000 is in, yes, and so we're really yeah. deleting the error or, or deferring. Deferring it through. Yeah. 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 Just a point of information when we do defer, does that, sorry, by a motion to defer, does that make it an automatic core for next year or does no, it just it make it a supplemental? No, it makes it a supplemental to come back on the sheet next year. Next, as a supplemental, not as a core. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Is there further discussion on that? Okay, so just to be clear on the motion, the motion is to defer traffic study for bike lanes on Lamson and the road study for Lyle to the uh, budget discussion of 2013. That would be the simple. As a supplemental request. And, and I have a mover and a seconder. Yep. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Councilor Hodgins opposed. Anyone else? I sorry, I was looking at my uh, The motion is carried. Then uh, we come down to the recycling charges increase uh, to reflect the new contract. Uh, I think there was um, just a clarification on that, recognizing that we have the contract for five years, but there was uh, further further discussion. I think that was was desired around moving forward in the future. Does that necessarily change the fact that it is on the list and, and, and uh, in any way? We were, my understanding is we were talking about the, this is not the composting, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, good. We were talking about that, and I think the discussion was, okay, we're paying this out, but are we getting any revenue back from selling it? You know, or that, that was what the discussion yeah. was about. Uh, it seems to me that if people are dropping their stuff off there, and basically all we're doing is providing a place for it to be parked, you know, why is it costing us $40,000? Why, you know, and especially if there's a private, my understanding is there is a private contractor involved with this, you know, like, it's like they're getting the money from the, the recycling, they're getting the money from the composting, they're bringing the stuff back, people are buying it off that, and we should be charging them 40000 to rent the space. So, like, I, I don't understand why we're paying for it, yet a private operator is also profiting off it. To me, that's double dipping. That, that's the way I see it. You know, I, I don't have any other frame of reference other than what I've seen. What I'm hearing from you is that you'd like more information, uh, exploring offerings uh, to look at revenue generation uh, at bearing in mind we have this contract so that we're prepared as we move through this contract to look at alternatives at the end of it. Exactly, uh, Your Worship. Uh, my personal experience in with other councils is that when we enter into things like that, it doesn't come to the you know, this, this, we might provide the space for them to park their trucks or do whatever it is they want to do, but to turn around and pay for something when somebody else can make a profit off of it, there's just something intrinsically wrong. You know, so that would be yes. And I would be prepared to make a, a motion that we, well, obviously we can't defer paying that, it's my understanding, but that it be brought back and that the contract be looked at. Is it you're requesting you're uh, requesting okay, further me, information let, from staff? Yeah, and let, we can't do anything about this right now, right? Yeah, until the end of and the contract runs till I believe it's a five year contract. And when did we sign it? Last year. So do you, so do you want do you want this in, I mean obviously we have time for this information to come forward. Yes, we got lots of So you don't want to lose it somewhere such that we at some point have this discussion as well. I would like to make the motion that that we review our garbage waste and recycling uh, contract uh, with the with looking at other options once the contract or prior to the contract 
prior to the contract expiring. Second that. Staff, are the, does that put us in any, uh, I mean, basically it's exploring for the future. Is there any liability or concern around that? Uh, as long as we're exploring and not changing the contract to worship, we, we can do that all we want. Um, if we're going to make a change to the contract, uh, that would be a little more serious and we would have to get the present service provider to agree to any possible changes. So at this point what we're doing is exploring. We haven't made a motion to do anything other than that. Bring it on. Are you comfortable with yes. that? You have a mover and a seconder. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? No, the motion is carried. Uh, I don't believe there is anything on the next page. No. And I don't believe there is anything on the sport. no? sports, uh, recreation, and cultural services. Do you think there was something, Scott? other page. Uh, staff are really encouraging us to try and do that. Let's, uh, let's take us down. So on the first page of the capital request, uh, we start um, IT uh, computers, both desktop and laptop, and that was Councilor Morris, and I don't know whether you want to... Councilor McBrain? We, we pass the people, so we need to pass the equipment. Uh, this is a different... Yeah, you're thinking the furniture. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking the furniture, you're right. All right. Um, so I... The chair? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I think we didn't really have any clarity as to whether we were just replacing laptops for the sake of replacing them, or whether they, you know, really were in a condition that they just weren't. The current, I mean, we're only talking about one more year, and, and as was stated by staff, they're not um, in everyday use. They're not, we, a lot of our staff are desk based um, and not on the road, um, not traveling and whatnot. So and I'm guessing they're used for PowerPoint presentations and things like that. So I, I just, I wonder if there's an opportunity there to, to save not a lot of money, but. Uh, you know, um, the laptop amount at least anyway. So is your staff, staff are always better at answering their questions. Um, I just want to clarify the items in the prior year cannot be eliminated. Those have been approved in the previous budget. And um, activity on that has probably very well begun or, and just wasn't finished by December 31st, but we're in March right now. So. Um, and it, it has received prior approval. And we, um, and the other item, uh, the rest of the, the two items that were applied for review, uh, de desktop computers and laptop computers. Um, so part of that is prior year and um, is not up for elimination. I, I think what it is is just a request for information around um, so absolutely, I don't. I don't feel. I don't have the the, the information that Councilor Morrison yeah. is looking for. We can certainly bring that back to you uh, from the IT department, telling you how they assess and how they replace and how they do all of that and what their replacement program is. Um, I might have been misleading in my information because if I go back to the uh, presentation by IT on core services, there's actually. Um, 150 computers, 25 laptops, and 50 wise thin client terminals. And this money that is here in core that is up for discussion, if you so choose, actually only replaces eight, um, eight terminals and two PCs. So it's, we're not replacing all of them. It's, a, it's an annual replacement of a portion of them. So, but to, to give you 
to do any more than that, I would have to bring Jeremy in to do that. And I think that's what we need to do if you're if you want to have a level of comfort as to how that all happens. Um, I, I don't believe that the money should be taken out of the budget. We can bring that explanation back to you prior to final approval of the budget. So the short answer is we cannot take remove this from the budget. Not prior year. Okay. But would you like to request further information and have Jeremy come and speak to us about uh, you know these decisions around? Yeah. So, so just and for further clarification, changing any of this doesn't change your tax rate. Mm -hmm. But I still understand the need for the information. What we can do is that the current 2012 core budget, we can uh, we, we can um, endeavor to bring that information back before any of those expenditures are made, before the final approval of the budget, to give you a level of comfort of, uh, as to how that replacement program works and what is happening. Yes, I'd be, uh, I'd be happy with that. Okay. And you've got direction now, you don't need a motion. Yeah, I, I'll talk to Jeremy and have him actually bring it to council. And, Great. And just to pick up on earlier conversation around the, the more modern technologies that I'd like to hear about that as well. I think the tablets will you know, be much more effective in, in the longer term. So if Jeremy could provide us with some of those kinds of recommendations, right. that'd be great. And he'll great. be able to, to have that discussion yeah. And just to add to, sorry, to the chair, just to add to that, every organization that has gone to tablet based has been able to eliminate the, the need for second laptops or uh, second computers. So right. it is very efficient in the long term, okay. much more flexible in its use. Well, before any 2012 budgeted funds are expended, we will have that discussion again. <coughs> okay. So further down the page, um, uh, obviously at the office furnishing, but we, we passed the positions, so I can expect that that's not a concern. <laughs> uh, the other uh, one that I understand you flagged was the generator. Um, before that, I believe we had the, there was a flag, that, uh, even though it was deferred, it doesn't affect this year's budget, they upgraded the council chamber audiovisual equipment. Yeah. Oh, correct. Yes. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to go back to that, I think, through the chair. Um, so my understanding was that, that staff indicated they support this, but even if they wanted to do it this year, they don't have the, is it, is it correct to say the resources to do it? it we, that's why it was taken. We haven't contributed enough funds to the uh, replacement fund in order to fund all of, all of the $60,000. So deferring it to next year, ensures that we've contributed enough money into that fund to now withdraw. Um, and if, if we were to ask, if the council were to ask that that be put back in for 2012, the, the, the 60,000, um, is that something that could be done? In terms of, we're, and what, the reason why I did flag this is that we, we do have a problem with our, our sound system. More times than not, people speaking at the podium aren't able to be heard. Um, oftentimes, staff are not able to be heard. We have problems with our <coughs> presentations. It's just, it really, it's not, you know, once in a blue moon kind of thing. It seems to be a regular problem. And I know watching the videos that we've been having that are, these speakers go in and out all the time as well. If you, you move your chin slightly one way or the other, you, your, your voice drowns out. And, and I, so it is a problem, and, and I think communications being a big part of, of what we have identified in our strategic plan, and having sat in the gallery for many years before, two years before, um, I know it can be very challenging for the public to fully be engaged in a council meeting, uh, either here in, in, in live in the audience or at home watching it on a YouTube video. Either way, it's just not conducive to what we're trying to accomplish in terms of engaging our, um, our, our community in our proceedings, so I, I would suggest if, if putting it back in, and if we don't spend it, we don't spend it, but if we are able to get it done faster this year rather than next year, I'm 100% in support of that. Clarification staff, the reason it's red is that we 
if we put it back in, then we have to find somewhere else within that fund to take it out in order to maintain the balance in our account. Or There's a balancing Not act. Exactly. No? Okay. So, um, okay. so we have, if, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to explain it. Within the fund, it's segregated into who that money belongs to. So much belongs to the fire department, so much belongs to public works, so much belongs to IT. They would be overdrawing their portion of the fund, but not overdrawing the total fund. Does that make sense? So you can put it back in the budget. If we don't spend it, we don't spend it. If we spend less than that, then we're okay. Um, it really, bringing it in or out of the budget doesn't put us in a deficit position in the overall fund balance. Let's put it that way. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson. And if I'm understanding this correctly, it will not impact where we're going it doesn't, to. Doesn't impact no. in terms of so that's an important point. Mm -hmm. Now, would you like to make that motion? Sure, I'll, I'll move the motion that we, um, I, I guess, uh, counter the staff recommendation and, and uh, we put, uh, place that $60,000 back into um, approved call. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Those opposed? None. Motion to carry. Uh, star generator replacement clarification council as to what your thoughts were on that. Uh, your worship, uh, I brought up the, the concern on that, and I have since had some subsequent discussion, and uh, I'm quite prepared to make a motion to provisionally uh, keep this in the budget but look at the possibility of combining uh, the two municipal generators together so that we have one generator instead of two. I'll second his motion. Okay, now we can talk about it. And, uh, so, through the chair. Councillor Hodgkins, it's all. I'm not sure that that's possible. I mean, and I'll ask the expert chief to respond, but, you know, I've a lot of generators in my day. And the way the system is, we have a generator for this facility because it's the emergency operations center proper, and obviously you need power. At the same time, the emergency services facility needs power 24-7, 365. So to look at a unit that would provide power for both facilities at the same time, because when something significant happens, we open the emergency operations center and we have to have backup power, et cetera. And at the same time, you have to have power in the emergency services facility. So if you were to create one generator, you'd have to look at a facility for it. You would have to look at expensive wiring to, to get the power from the generator to the facilities. So could it, is it possible? Yeah, would it cost us a hell of a lot more? You betcha. So that's my two cents for the, you know. But I understand you've also had some sidebar discussions in New York. Quite a board Council, of support. Council, I need a motion to extend the meeting. I'll, I'll move to extend until completion. That's, that's allowed. Completion of what? Until completion of this discussion. This, uh, no, no. no. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> do I have to put it in actual time? Okay. <laughs> So I will say I, I prefer a time. Okay, all right. <laughs> it makes it, it gives us a goal. Oh, I thought we could get our sleeping bags out. So. <laughs> well, we've got uh, backup generators, so we have lots of power. We've got the kitchen there, we can go have dinner at the fire station. There, but yeah. Anyway. To extend uh, till? Till 10.30. Thank you. Seconder? I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? Oh, yeah, I almost opposed it. Okay. Uh, motion passes. Uh, have you got the uh, dissenting votes there? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go to the fire chief.
Chief Ward, uh, for your uh, comment on this motion that is before us. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I would, like to, I would like to concur with what Councillor Hodgkins indicates that um, it would be far more expensive to, um, and what um, what we're talking about, Councillor, um, is a power plant, and that power plant would need to be big enough to run both facilities. Right now, um, each generator is sized large enough just to to run each each one of these facilities, and um, to run both of them, as Councillor Hodgkins indicates, you would need a much larger power plant, and then you'd have to provide the uh, services, underground services, to connect that facility, and it would be far more expensive. And uh, this is the recommended solution. <coughs> Yes, my motion was that I would support it, but provisionally, but I wanted some more information. I'd like to see those numbers. The reason I say that is as a previous councillor at another council, we went through this same thing. The two buildings were exactly the same size as this one and that one, and we did it with one generator. That, I'm basing that on my experience as a professional. What, uh, it is in the budget, therefore we don't need a motion to support it. But what you're requesting is further information uh, around this, uh, exploring uh, the opportunities. That's right, prior to the money being spent. Staff? Um, my comments are that um, um, I'm not comfortable with, with uh, that because um, I'm not sure when we're going to need that generator, and uh, I, it may be before I'm okay. able to provide a solution or a, a, a And then I, I will take his motion and I will uh, go through it and, and uh, call the question on it. Councillor Hodgkins. We have a generator here now. So, what would we pay for that generator that's in this facility? And how old is it? It's as old as this building, and unfortunately, I wasn't here when we built this building, so I don't have that. I think that's data. Well, I guess my point is, if if we go down the road of uh, holding back the money and uh, putting one generator in, we've got a surplus generator here, uh, and probably won't get any money for that. So I'm just concerned that overall, let's just we're going to end up spending a lot of additional dollars Staff. to provide what we need. Staff? We're just having a discussion here. That generator was only installed about three years ago. Yeah. And I think it was in the neighborhood of $200,000. Yeah, that would be my So we'd be lucky to get $25,000 for it on the used market. Okay. So Councilor Shinbein has, has made a motion that he, and he doesn't feel comfortable just, just allowing it to, to come back to them without putting a caveat on, on the spending um, <coughs> of the money. So I'm going to call the question on his motion, um, recognizing that the motion says that we would not uh, uh, allow the, the use of that funding without the chief coming back with a report that the chief basically indicating that it, he, he is not sure he can provide within the time frame is being requested to do that. So, uh, your motion, what, is your motion seconded, first of all? I seconded the agenda. Yes, you did. Okay, so I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Thank you. We now move on to the galley renovation was flagged. So, excuse me, Chair, so in effect, this money's there. It's, it's there, there, it's in the budget, yeah. Uh, does anyone remember uh, concerns around GAL? Just uh, for the chair, I, sorry, I had a series of questions for the chief, he did answer them. Um, so I guess this comes down to a question of uh, do we want to have a, a, a 
kitchen facility in the event that we have an emergency. Hopefully that day will never come. We have no control over that. Um, I think what the chief is doing here is trying to prepare for the worst, which is his responsibility as, as chief. Uh, so I just throw it out there to, to council this year, 2012, do we think it's going to be necessary or can it wait? And we have, as I said, we, and I have, I'm, trying to, I'm not try, trying to argue against my own concern, but we have no real control over what's going to happen in 2012. And it, it does not affect our tax rate? Well, if, if I could. Tax rate? Yeah. Chair. Council. So we've spent considerable dollars to enhance the emergency services facility. So we'll to bring it up to speed so that it, it's, it's there, it's relatively safe when the quake hits, etc. Uh, there's some work being done to ensure that it's cost effective in terms of the utilities and the operation. I think it, in my mind, is money well spent. I mean, you, when you do a renovation, you reno the facility and bring it up to a today's standard. And obviously the galley is not up to the standard. We, we saw the galley when we did our orientation. And uh, you know, I'll rely on the expertise of the chief and his advice saying that we need to do this to, to meet uh, an acceptable standard of preparedness. And that's what I base it on. And it has to do with public safety at the end of the day. Council, what I'm going to ask you to do is if you have flagged something and you have a strong feeling that you don't want this included in the budget, as we get to your flag, make a motion so that we can get through these uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, 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 so let's, uh, I is there... Uh, I think Councilor Council Hodges move a motion to approve? It, it, it doesn't have to move a motion oh, to remove approve, it's right. there. Yeah. You would have to have make a motion to remove. I think well, Councilor Mackay has... Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm in support of the galley because uh, uh, I can remember years ago where you know, we had a park caught on fire. <coughs> And we had to pull all those people out there. And yeah, now we're scrambling. We have the rec center, but yeah. But we didn't have anywhere to, to make that food for those people. So you know, we had the Lions Club come in. We had the Kiwanis come in. But we still lacked one thing. We didn't have the facilities to cook. So I think with the galley there, whether we have an emergency today or tomorrow or 20 years down the road, we've got something there that's going to protect us. Thank you. So that, that is in the budget. Yep. Councillor Shinbein, are you making a motion to take it out? Yes. Okay, is there a seconder? You have no seconder. There, uh, we will move on. The next item. Chief. Um, Madam Chair, I would just like to clarify one item for Councillor Shinbein. I had indicated that the $150,000 for the engine was being contributed to the m and &E fund. That was an incorrect statement. That, uh, that money is being funded from that m and &E fund, and that is necessary for, in order for the, the order to be placed for the new engine, because you have to put money up front as a deposit when the fire truck is being built, and then when it's, the order is complete in 2013, that's when the balance of the money is, is paid for that engine. So I just wanted to clarify that for Councillor Shinbine that it's no, uh, there's no tax lift as a result of the, the $150,000 as, <coughs> as Ms. Hurst had indicated, the money's coming from the M&E fund. Thank, thank you, Chief. I, I was not in any way against you getting a new fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> like, not at all. I'm, I'm against a new kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Uh, the uh, engineering car, I was the one who starred that, and really what I want to do is just ensure that we look at all possible ways of setting an example, doing the right thing in terms of moving forward with our, our, our green fleet. And the next thing that was starred is, uh, I believe, down to traffic calming on Old Esquimalt Road. So, we, we had counselor. So to speak to the issue of the request for the funding for traffic calming, I think we've heard loud and clear from the public, and obviously there are 
somewhat polarized in terms of you know, uh, what they would like to see to get to speed reduction traffic cut. I didn't hear anybody say they weren't in favor of reducing the speed and making the roadway more safe. What I heard loud and clear was, we don't want speed humps. And then the group that presented and asked for the traffic calming said, we're okay with that, we just want traffic calming. So I say, we leave the money, we go back to engineering and, and, and ask for some options and opportunities that would meet the need in terms of reducing or controlling the speeding and would then also be something that all the residents could support to the extent, when I say all the residents, to the extent possible. So that's, uh, I'd like to see options and opportunities way beyond speed bumps. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, I support the comments that I think that we um, probably should look at other things as well, and I will give you one example. So, in Oak Bay, on Fall Bay Road, if you go over 30 kilometers an hour, there is a in-place speed reader that flashes at you, dark, it's very effective, <laughs> um, that says 30 and slow down. And so I'm wondering whether that might be an option to consider. It's a little less um, uh, specific as bumps, but it's sort of right there. It's right there so that we always have it. Instead of having the mobile speed meter, we have one that's stationary and fixed. And that might work and it might not, but I think it's worth a try as opposed to putting something so concrete, pardon the pun, as a speed tube. Thank you. Further discussion? Yeah, I think we already have them on Craig Flower Road, do we not? They're portable. Are those portable, Mr. Miller? The two on the... On the far end? On the western end of Craig Flower are permanent. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Hodgson? We call it on Craig Flower Road, there's a post where the, the sign is... But every once in a while I drive down and they're not there. Do they move to a different location? No, they, they were probably undergoing maintenance at the time, or they were turned off. Those ones, because of the nature of they, are, they need a power source, yeah. and they're not a portable one that you can move around. Well, I learned something. I never, <laughs> I never go too fast. Unlike other counselors that have a flashing. We have two minutes if we need to. Dis <laughs> I have. Councillor Morrison, and then I'd like to add a few comments. Okay. So, just very quickly, because of the time. So, if we do go ahead and approve this seventy thousand dollars, but not necessarily for the the purpose that was requested, uh, and we end up using significantly less than, than what was what we set aside, does that uh, additional excess money just go back to the surplus fund? No, no it stays in the capital projects. Stays. It just never gets withdrawn. Oh, okay. So what we do is we we start a project and. Yeah. And we draw the money out of the fund to match the cost of the project. So, I, I, you know, I support the comments of Councillor Hundley and Councillor uh, Hodgins. And, and my only concern, though, is that if we create a bit of a tiny bit of a tax increase out of this and don't even use the fund, that's where I get concerned. It does not affect the tax rate. Okay. So, so it comes from uh, the way the capital projects reserve fund works is we reserve the approve a project, let's say for seventy thousand. Let's say right. we only spend fifty, then we only withdraw fifty thousand from the capital. Ex project. Okay, right. Yes. Thank you very much. My concern is there has been so much discussion around speed bumps and humps. I want to be absolutely clear that that is not the route we are taking because I don't support that route. Uh, and, and so you know, at the end of the day, um, I, I can't support leaving the 70,000 in there if, if I think it's going to turn into a speed hump. So I guess I want clarity from council as to you're, you're, you want to leave that option in as well as other options or you go ahead. Through the chair, from my perspective, I would want engineers to come back and if they come back and say it's 
It's a combination of opportunities and some speed tables, then I would, I would, I would support that. But I wouldn't want to take speed tables or speed pumps off the table completely because we, you know, we might tie the hands of engineering and if they're going to come back with you know, some different ideas and options, I'd want to hear that. Okay. So uh, I, w I just want to register that I, w I wouldn't support leaving it in based on, on the, the uh, fact that I can't support speed bumps along that road. I support traffic calming. So leave it at that statement. It's in the budget. Unless anyone's making a motion to take it out, it stays there. And I'm going to ask for another extension, please. Move an extension of five minutes to 25 to 11. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? I'm not even going to call the opposed. You're all in favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's democracy. I, 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 move, I move that uh, regarding the traffic calming on Oldest Squamalt Road, that staff provide options for traffic calming um, and that be brought back to council. Second. Thank you. Question. Any further discussion? None. So have I have I got my bumps removed from your? No. 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 Okay. okay. All those in favor? Opposed? I cannot consider speed bumps. Okay. We move on, and on the next page. Yes. No, the bottom of the page. No, the sidewalk the page. construction. Yeah. Sidewalk, construction. Oh, sidewalk construction. We have the twenty-two thousand for the north side. Is, it, is there, and there was a discussion to defer, to defer this uh, pending um, uh, community consultation? Yes. Yeah. So is, can somebody make that motion? I'll move that we defer until there is community consultation on that project. So with all from the budget. Second. Clarity around community consultation in terms of the question is north or south, right? Yeah. Yeah. So as long as we understand that that's going to be part of the yeah. We're taking it out of this year's budget, um, moving toward next year, but having that consultation around where, how it works out. Do we have to take it out of this year's budget to accomplish that? Can we not leave the money in and have the community consultation and then go ahead and do it if everybody's on site? Here's what we just did with the Yeah. So. so so yeah, but I think we need if, to, we if need you're to putting the word defer in there, then, then you're deferring it. Yeah. But I think we need more information from engineering because if we're talking the south side of that sidewalk being put in, now we're talking a rock being blown up to make room for that sidewalk, which is a lot more dollars. But you're talking about postponing it and asking for more information. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, staff can... Help us out. What was the difference um, in your in your mind? Well, when we talk about deferring items, we defer them to the next budget year. So, if you want to postpone any expenditures on this project until such time as consultation can be completed, then that would be a, a better. Okay. Price. That 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 sounds reasonable. Yep. Well, my one concern is there's two very different costs and implications as well. So you can come up with a new one, but we budgeted 22,000 and it could very well come in at 50, so deferring we could give it the exact dollar value it requires and it could be, it could be an early budget approval or the 22,000 could carry forward to the next year. Takes one half, doesn't it? <laughs> or when the report comes back to council, we can tell you where we get the additional funding from, from for this year. So would it be best if I withdrew my motion and we just leave it in there and ask for a report and public consultation on the project? I think so. So then? Do you need a motion to that or are you going to speak to it? Yeah, we'll just leave it. And, you, and you've got uh, direction. Okay. Anything on the next page? Storm sewers, traffic signals? Recreation? Anything on recreation? No. I think we were... Are there um, council, council uh, 
hang on because we still have um, public input. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? One minute. Ten seconds or less. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? I move to adjourn. Please. We're available for comments and input on the steps outside. Uh, uh, Jason Ross, I'm from Victoria, actually. Uh, but I just want to comment about the uh, system in here for that's in desperate need of some sort of attention. Um, out of the core municipalities of Saanich, Victoria, and Oak Bay, and Esquimalt, Esquimalt is the only municipality which does not provide a media output for its audio system, meaning for both professional and amateur recorders, such as myself, we cannot get a clean audio feed of the proceedings. So we're relying on essentially uh, atmosphere. And when you have a large number of speakers, including most of staff, talking regularly without having a microphone in front of them, uh, the sound levels are incredibly uh, variable. So uh, I Thank talked you. to the AV guy who uh, was here yesterday trying to do some work on the system. And he was saying that the reason why there is no media output is that the system is sort of a Frankensteinian system of multiple channels all going outward. Jason, so I appreciate your input. I'm going to have to cut you off if you don't mind. Otherwise, I'm going to have to for, ask for a motion to extend. You saw the mutiny I had just a minute ago. Could you all just for the chair, could Jason send his uh, concerns in writing to staff? That would be very helpful. You can certainly send your comments. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the public? Seeing none, I'm going to call a motion to adjourn. No move. Wait, wait, wait. We, have a we have something else we have to do. Well, yeah, that needs some, a little further direction. We're supposed to come back on the 19th of March with preliminary tax rates. We can't do that with a final, without a finalized budget. So unless we schedule another meeting between now and the 19th. Okay. We have a number of, of topics still to decide, don't we? Um, I think we've reviewed everything on the budget except the policing, the in-camera policing. Okay. And I don't know what that discussion is about and whether it's going to change this number. If it doesn't change this number, if we're not planning on changing this number, then we can use this budget and go ahead and we can have that in-camera discussion on the night. Uh, Council, what is your wish? Well, the 19th is very busy. We're not doing anything on the 12th, is that right? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I have a life, but I don't know about you. Well, no, yeah. <laughs> if we're coming for a meeting that's going to be for a five minute discussion, I don't, I don't think that's a good So use. let's leave it to the 19th. We have one yeah. item to discuss. Okay. What what I would suggest is you prepare it as based on what, based on what you've got, yeah. and then mm -hmm. we go from there. If, if that policing number changes later, we can make adjustments. We'll, we'll use what we have now. Okay. Thank you. Um, you have your direction then, and I need have my motion to adjourn. So let's so move. Second. Good. All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, audience, and thank you, staff, and thank you, council.